Okay. All right. Since uh, the topic of the night is yours, let's go to you first, Doc. Would having a public health care system like Medicare for All, uh, good question, make it easier to deal with, uh, but that's a great political question we didn't get to. Um, you know, what a time for that issue in the middle of a pandemic. I mean, I, I could see that really helping Bernie, but the question is, would a public health care system like Medicare for all make it easier to deal with a pandemic? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it would. I mean, I, you think... Well, we don't know what it looked, what it looked well, like yet, so well, we don't... Yeah. But, but just in general, I mean, you think about a, a, a pandemic, and you, or you think about illness in general, and the, the issue is is that our, our, you know, everybody needs health care, and if you have somebody who can't afford health care, who's sick, not able to take care of themselves, right. and those people are everywhere, those people. I mean, everybody is everywhere, and so really, we are as healthy and as safe as the the, the poorest and mm. least yeah. insured, least capable person of taking care of themselves. We're all in this together. And so that is a perfect example of how we should all be in this together. But it's a village. I mean, what, what matters, presumably, is universal coverage. It doesn't really matter whether it's a single-payer system exactly. or a multi-payer system. Right. So it doesn't Absolutely. have to be Medicare for all. It just needs universal coverage. A lot of people, go, lot of people go, to, go to work of, sick yes, now. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Do they exactly. not? Don't a lot of people in America, even before this, go to work? Well, a lot of people go to work yeah. also not knowing well, that they even have this, right? Which is one of the concerns. Well, yes. But, but I, well, yes. But I think that the big issue here is this issue of work culture. So we're telling everybody, listen, if you can stay home, if you don't feel well, just stay home and, and don't go to work. But there are a lot of people that don't have a choice if they get to go to work or not because they're not going to have a paycheck. This is the only country in the world that doesn't have paid leave. Moms or dads whose kids get sick and and they can't. They, exactly. they have no family leave whatsoever. Right. Work, which is right. sort of, I think, one of the big underlying issues we're going to face in the election. Right. Okay. No, I, I agree with you completely. And it's this issue of, you know, are you going to go to work if you're sick, uh, if you can't put food on your table, if you can't pay your rent, if you're not going to be take, able to take care of your children, yourself, your elderly parent? I mean, it's 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 not fair just to be able to say, well, you know, everybody should just do better and 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 be good public health citizens and stay home. We need everybody to do better, and that means also supporting businesses that have good family, uh, pro-family um, policies, and making sure that that um, we, who people who are business owners, are mindful of this also in allowing people during this time period in particular. If people don't feel well, it's actually in your best interest to let them stay home and to encourage people to stay home. We're not a country that prepares well, are we? Well, well, we don't. We don't. We don't think in the for the future. And our rural hospitals are closing. And so, when it comes to policies yeah. like Medicare for all, or if a single payer, you know, system, whichever one we're going to go down, or a public option, that would not only help in situations like the coronavirus, but it helps in just the obesity issues that you were talking about, addiction, life expectancy, keeping hospitals and all our health metrics. American kids exactly. are fifty-five percent more likely to die by age nineteen, partly because of this question of universal lack of universal access. And young people are healthcare. tired of us talking about it. As a country, we've been talking about fixing our healthcare system for. 50 years. Like, Wait, we know more, sure. we know what the solution is. Like, let's get on with it and let's start well, electing well, people I mean, who are actually going to do it. Well, you do Obamacare, right? So that it was, was a move. It was a step in the right direction, no question. Supposed to fix the things that apparently weren't fixed. Tried to and block it, would, it, no. by the way. And it would be more effective. It did, a lot. Sure no, the Medicaid expansion was the biggest single piece of it, no question right. about it. So. And, a, and some states blocked the Medicare expansion. It's happening in Nebraska. It's still Nebraska. Voters have to take it into their own Trump administration has tried to sabotage it at every turn. We know that. They're in court now. You would not agree. Yes. I mean, no, they do not like Obamacare. That is for sure. Yeah, like, that, is, right. that is a true thing. Yeah. But that's not how we used to do things in this country. If we pass something, then they maybe got together and then tried to improve it. That's certainly what happened. Look, more. I mean, there, there's, there are a few... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to... No, no. I was going to say, I mean, the, the issue of pre-existing conditions, I mean, de Democrats won on that. They, that, that's a win. I mean, across the meaning that right. everyone now, no one now goes forward and says, oh, we got to get rid of that, right? So there are areas where the, the ball has been moved the way that, that progressives, liberals would want it to. Although the but Trump administration litigation say, would but... overturn Obamacare and when then would bring back pre-existing conditions. Yeah, verbal support is not the same as supporting a policy no. that actually ensures it. And just on your point, Again, on this radicalization of the Republican Party, which has pushed almost all moderates, people who would have been happily Republican 30 or 40 years ago, a good example of that uh, is our food stamps. Bob Dole 
and George McGovern, who could not have been farther apart politically, got together and said, we've got a hunger problem in America and sure. we have to do something about that. If a Republican uh, did that kind of thing with anybody, any Democrat on the other side in the Senate, uh, they might face some of those because consequences they were both World you War, talked they about. They were both your... World War II veterans. Yes. They yes. both remember. No, there was a, that's right. They both remember what it was, especially Bob Dole. They remember what it was like to come home and have the entire community take care of it because yeah. Bob Dole was wounded, do, remember? Do, do you think the Democrat Party is not the furthest left that it's ever been? I mean, you keep talking about the radicalized Republican Party. I'm just no, wondering where I mean, the Democratic Party, I mean, we have a, an open socialist as the front runner, right? A simple statistic, if you ask Republicans who they are ideologically, two-thirds or more are conservative. If you ask Democrats, they're split, half liberal and half either moderate or conservative. If right. you look at the voting patterns in Congress... He's only the front-runner because they have four, They've split. four they're people all who are the, the, the majority but if of Warren of and Buttigieg. A few people, I'm, I'm sorry. Right, but if, if, if... They're if, close to him. Policy. Okay, but if Buttigieg, Bloomberg, Biden, and Klobuchar were all one person, ooh. <laughs> 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 They'd be really, really rich. An old gay man who throws staplers at your head. No. Um, <laughs> that, that would be the front runner. And that may happen in two weeks. We yeah. may see that. Bernie Sanders may not be the front runner That's because right. yeah. three of them may drop out or something like that, and then we, we will see. So I don't, I don't know. I don't think even most Democrats identify as liberal. No, that's absolutely no, right, especially nice. in our communities of color, where black, Latino, Native yes. Americans, they are not flaming liberals, as you would like no. to, them to think that they are. They're very moderate on um, social issues and very liberal on economic right. issues. They want to see our government get back to the job that we believe, that it levels the playing field, that it brings fairness, and that the mantra that Senator Wellstone used to say is true for all Democrats, that we all do better when we all do better. And that's what we have to get back to our Democratic Party in order to right. heal these kind of divides right now in order to beat Trump, which is the uh, ultimate goal, of course. <laughs> yeah, <for some> of <laughs> you. Uh, well, I mean, uh, honestly, uh, it, it is. I'm, tell, I'm telling you, it's, it's not going. It's not going to go well for your boy. It's just not. It's he, no. I'm sorry because. Of, <laughs> what does that even mean? I mean, this virus is something he cannot lie his <laughs> way out of. It, no, but can't, that's, you can't. He said it was a hoax today. I, what do you think about just that? Just answer that. What do you think about that? He said it is their latest hoax. You don't think is, it's a he, hoax? It's, of course, he doesn't think it's a hoax. Of course, it's not a hoax. And why is he and, saying it? Point, he's saying that what's the hoax is the way that Pelosi and Schumer and others are saying that there's been an insufficient response that he doesn't know what he's doing when we don't even know how many cases no. we have. In no one's no. died yet, and but your point about, about accountability is important because he can't. If, if there are people that are dying from this in large numbers, yes. the stock market's really low. Yes, Trump's going to suffer, and yeah. I, I wouldn't That's be just able to. That's what I just you. said. Well, I said I your boy. It's not going to go. <laughs> well. I said it's not going to go well for your boy. Well, you're right, but. Well, you're assuming. I mean, I, I'm, we'll, see, we'll see what ends up happening. We'll see. But, but the point I'm trying but to make is just that there I've, will be accountability here. So why are people trying to force it before it's there? But it I've seen, like when I see people with the masks on the street, now, occasionally you do, and I, it just reminds me that these, America always thinks these things are not going to come here. We didn't think it was yeah. with terrorism. And then terrorism came here. Uh, and maybe AIDS, I think, was in the world before it came here. And now this. And environmental destruction on a level that other countries have seen. It always is going to come here. We've had pandemics stretching back yes, from the origins have. of the republic. Yes, Actually, no. New York City has a history of sure. cholera epidemics where they were stacking up Irish and African Amer uh, Irish immigrants and African-American freed slaves down on the Lower East Side by, by the thousands over the course of a few weeks. So I'm, this has been... And, you know, people were saying, where's the government on this one? So I'm just saying... And the party's over, in the sense that this country has periods where they party. The, the gay 90s, that Tony, <laughs> gay 90s, the roaring 20s, the go-go 80s. There are, and we've had it the last 10 years. And then the party ends for one reason or another. We are going to. You have think the party's to, over right now? Already? I just think we're going to. Well, when you lose six trillion dollars in a week, and people are freaked out about a pandemic, which is inevitably coming, I do think. It's bad. It's going to be a little, be and, less of a party. It's bad. I, yeah. Antoine, the yeah, economic I'd call inequality. an Uber now. That's right. Well, <laughs> if we have economic inequality that was already here, right? So we have the millionaires and the billionaires, and then you have everybody else. And so we as Just, a party have to know, start people, fighting for policies that matter again. going out and kissing strangers, people are going to be inside and taking care of themselves a little more. And then we'll party again someday, I promise. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>